Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of bbfohio.com as we conclude this study beginning in Romans 7.14 titled Our Dual Nature taught by Brother Stephen Miller. This is part two of two. So I, don't, I don't like talking to people. So uh, it, for me, that was the major thing. Was, hey, I don't want to go talk to some new stranger or whatever like that. I don't want to... Uh, engage in any type of conversation um, just because they'll want honestly it's because I know they'll want something so I I don't have friends because I know that my friends will want me to do something and I don't really want to do that and uh, it's a I guess it's lazy or whatever it is it's well that that also means that I can't lean on them when I need help so so the um, okay so uh, go to uh, Romans Uh, you're, you're in Romans 1 go to Romans 10 so it's one of my favorite verses. Actually, I have a, a friend. I don't know if you guys know, do that life verse thing where, uh, where like you pick a verse and that's what you direct your life around. I have a friend who this is their life verse. Um, it, uh, it's kind of fun. Romans 10, 14, it says, um, this is one of the reasons why you should preach to people, why you should tell them about Jesus. It says, uh, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So it goes on to say other things. But there's only one way to get the message of the Bible out, to get the message of Jesus out. And that's to speak. That's to, to, to talk. Or to, uh, yeah, I guess you could type. Um, you know, we pass out tracts. That's a, that's, a, that's a way. That's a communication. So you need to preach. You need to preach the Bible. You know, uh, one of the things you know, um, you know, women preachers. Well, no, it, it, it's it's okay. You can you can preach Jesus. You can you can tell people about Jesus. That's that's okay for women to do. You know, that's that's a um, it's commanded to every single Christian to witness to witness what Jesus did. And by witness, I mean not just to see, but to speak. So. So the, uh, the first thing is uh, pray, the second thing is give, the third thing is tell people about Jesus, and the fourth thing is to read and study your Bible every day. Now, you don't necessarily have to do it every day, but I suggest every day. You should read something uh, in the Bible every day. If it's just one verse, it's one verse, but then you should also go on to study your Bible. Um, so go to, uh, obviously everybody knows 2 Timothy 2.15, but we'll go there anyway. So go to 2 Timothy 2.15. And 2 Timothy 2.15 is the only place in the Bible that you are commanded to study your Bible. So 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. So how do, you, how do you be approved unto God? You study, that's right. So study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that believeth not to be ashamed. There we talk about shame again. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So correct division. Um, so go to First uh, Timothy uh, four thirteen. First Timothy four thirteen. It says, <clears throat> "This is Paul talking, talking to Timothy." It says, "Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine." So, reading. Give attendance to reading. Paul says to Timothy, give attendance to reading. Well, he's telling Timothy to study and read your Bible. Uh, study and read these scriptures. Read the, uh, read the letters that I gave to you, that kind of thing. And to doctrine. So you need to actually study out the doctrines. So it's a, uh, it's a thing. Go to uh, Proverbs uh, 8. Actually, you know what? We'll skip that. So we're, we're getting a little down on time. Yeah. So the, uh, the first thing is uh, pray. The second thing is give. The third thing is tell others about Jesus. Uh, the fourth thing is to read your Bible, and that will put you in a state of you'll, you'll put your flesh um, where it's supposed to be, and you'll put the spirit where it's supposed to be. There's nothing that your flesh hates more than getting up out of bed 15 minutes early so you can read some of the Bible. Of course, that brings up another issue. To, to read your Bible, you have to go to bed. 
so that you can be awake to be able to read your Bible. So one of the, uh, uh, the, two, the two ways to stay healthy are to eat. Uh, well, actually, I guess there's three ways. Eat correctly, exercise, and sleep enough. Sleep is very, very important to uh, Christianity. The, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things that uh, Christians will do that is counterproductive to their spiritual nature is to burn the candles at, or burn the candle at both ends. So, so you know, you go to bed too late, you get up too early, and then burn the candle in the middle. Then you wake up sometime in the middle, and then you eat a whole bunch of Cheetos and stuff like that. Not, <laughs> not a good thing. I'm just talking about last night with me, okay? So that's, as Cheetos were good. So, but um, Cheetos and pizza. Speaking of Cheetos and pizza, you guys watch the Buckeye game? It was good. Yeah. 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 It's terrible. I thought it was terrible. I think the, uh, yeah. the Buckeyes played a terrible game. But they still won. So, but we should, have, we should, we should not have uh, lost that quickly. A what? You call it a what? An ugly win, yeah. An ugly win, yeah. We're, uh, yeah, it was bad. I don't think, see, I don't know, it's, it's just me, but, and we're going to be, I think we're going to be like number two now because um, I think Georgia lost yesterday, but, yeah, they, yeah, they were, they were way overrated, but uh, the Buckeyes are overrated also, I say it every year, I mean, it's, it's crazy, but, okay, so, um, Mariah's, Mariah's my clock, so, we were talking about you when you were gone, so it's a good thing you left, okay, so the fifth thing, <laughs> The fifth thing is uh, the fifth thing is go to church. So to put your flesh in the proper place. So you guys are already doing that. You're going to church. So uh, one of the things that Greg always says is is uh, we love the online ministry and it, it helps people a whole bunch. But if you have a local church that is Bible believing, you need to go to that local church. There's uh, and it's okay to to have fellowship with us on online or whatever like that and still go to a local church. We have tons of people that do that. But uh, you should be going to your local church to have local fellowship with local Christians. That's, uh, that's very important. The, uh, the online ministry is, is to help people who don't have a good local Bible-believing church. And there's, this is America, and there are tons of churches, I, I can tell you that. Um, and it's a shame that uh, in the Bible Belt, we have most of our listeners are from the South. That's a shame, because they should have, it's the Bible Belt. You know, we, we went down to... Uh, we went down to Tennessee, and one of the things, one of the things in Tennessee is you, you literally drive down the road, and there's First Baptist Church, and it looks like it's, it's, it's like a mausoleum. It's huge. I mean, it's crazy. And then you drive down the road a little bit more, and then there's another First Baptist Church and another First Baptist Church, and they're all huge. They're all just, just gigantic. And, what, you know, you have First Baptist Church of such and such road. That's crazy. And then you have down the road First Baptist Church of such and such road. And it's like, wait a second. And then you have a First Baptist Church of this, uh, uh, not, not First Baptist Church of Knoxville. You have First Baptist Church of whatever this, uh, well, Sevierville or whatever it is. Well, that's just a, that's a, what do you call those towns that are outside of towns? The suburb. It's just a suburb. So it's like in the south, that's what they have. They, they have these huge churches that are First Baptist Church of whatever suburb it is. And it's almost like you think First Baptist Church is like a denomination. You know, it's, it's not. It's just the First Baptist Church that, that came to that town. But, um, you know, so in the South, they have these huge Baptist churches, and it's, it's crazy because our online ministry, there's a lot of people in the South that just don't have a good local church to go to. But then again, there's a lot that do. So go to your local church if you can, and uh, no, not, it's, you should. Um, what is it? Uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 10.25 is always quoted out of context, so we're going to do that today. <laughs> Might as well. I don't know why I'm any different. Hebrews is a book written to tribulation Jews. So it's, um, and, and don't, get, don't get me wrong, I realize that. But it's, uh, it's good advice. Whenever, you know, you can get a lot of good doctrine out of Hebrews if you read it correctly and realize that it's written to tribulation Jews. But historically, it's written to first century Christians. So uh, Hebrews uh, 10, 25, it says, Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some are, as the manner of some is, as the manner of some is, I didn't turn the page, uh, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. So uh, this is actually talking about the return of Jesus Christ, um, but, uh, but it's a good example for what we should do. 
these, these guys are going to be in the tribulation being persecuted and being hunted down for assembling. In the United States, persecution for us is, is not having a pumpkin spice latte. So it's, it's, it's the machine at McDonald's breaking down. That's not persecution. That, that's not the devil. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not. Okay, we, if, if, you think, if you think you're being persecuted in the United States, I mean, you can, even, you can even take the Christian bakers and stuff like that and be like, oh, you lost your business and you lost your whole livelihood. That's cute. Yeah, we'll, we'll, go, uh, we'll go check out the Saudi Arabian Christians, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's persecution, and everybody's got their own level, and it's terrible to lose your entire livelihood because of, of a misinterpretation of the Constitution that protects us all. But um, it's... It's real, it is persecution, but the average Christian in America doesn't experience persecution. So, but anyway, so these guys did. These guys will experience persecution during the tribulation. And they were, they were commanded to come together more. They were commanded to assemble more. So we can see that the, the church is supposed to assemble more. So, and the, the church actually helps us. The church also helps us grow in sanctification. Um, okay, go to, uh, go to Mark uh, 9:41. And actually, the church helps, helps us serve. So, because um, one of the one of the things I heard on TV one time was, uh, "Gee whiz!" Uh, it was a, it was a lady being uh, questioned uh, by a news reporter, and she says, "Well, church is kind of for new people. I've been going here a couple of years, and there's really nothing new going on." So I don't really see the point in going to church anymore because I've heard and seen everything, which is true. It could be true for uh, Christians who, who live for a while. But uh, that brought me to the point, well, well what's, what's next? So what do, you, what do you have next? Well, so Mark, uh, I, I just looked it up, uh, Mark uh, 941 says, For whomsoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. What that's saying is that, well, after you've learned everything and seen everything and done everything, then maybe you can help somebody else learn everything and see everything and do everything. You can help somebody else grow as a Christian. You know, we've got a lot of baby Christians who need to grow as Christians. So after you've done all these things, then you're supposed to teach people and help people. You know, it's, uh, the Bible says that the, you know, the older women are supposed to teach the younger women. And that's a spiritual saying. It's not necessarily saying that if you're old and crusty and, and barely able to walk, then you can teach younger people. It's saying, well, you know, if you're a uh, Christian who's been going, you know, down the road for a while, then you can teach the baby Christians. So, and that's, that's what that's talking about. So go to church. Go to church not only to, uh, not only to be fed, but to feed. So, and you're going to feed your spirit. You're going to uh, be fed spiritually, and then you're going to feed spiritually. So we don't, we don't need our Bibles. It's not a physical thing, not a literal physical thing. So the, uh, the sixth thing <coughs> excuse me, is uh, talk about the Bible with friends and fellowship. So to, uh, to become more spiritually minded, you should be talking about the Bible with your friends and fellowshipping. Uh, Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpened with iron. So when you come up with uh, crazy, stupid ideas like I do sometimes about the Bible, usually I take those and and I put those in a little box, and then I go to Greg, and I say, hey, Greg, what do you think of this crazy, stupid idea? I came up with it all by myself. And then Greg says, well, that's great, Steve, except for this, 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 and that. And then the Bible says this, which is specifically saying that what you're saying is heretical. Isn't that cool? So one of the best things to do is to find, uh, find somebody who's been going down the road a little bit and uh, instead of posting it online or something like that, posting your crazy, weird ideas online, you can go to that person and say, hey, I found this in the Bible. What do you think of that? And then they'll, they'll, they could be like, oh, yeah, that's really cool. That's, uh, that's something that, uh, that's uh, really interesting. Or they can be like, well, um, yeah, but your, your interpretation is wrong because of such and such thing. So uh, iron sharpeneth iron. That's what it's talking about. You, you literally become a sharper instrument uh, you, your doctrine becomes sharper, your, uh, your thinking becomes sharper, and your spiritual nature will become sharper. So and we won't go over all the, all the verses. Just, you can look up uh, Proverbs uh, 
and uh, Philippians uh, 8, I'm sorry, Philippians uh, 4, 8 through 9 on uh, other things related to talking about the Bible. So number seven is put others first. So the, uh, this is a big one. Uh, this, is, this is one that I see most Christians do not do. Um, but you would think that it would be like the first thing that, you know, it's like in Christianity, this should be one of the first things that we, that we do is to put others first. Uh, go to um, uh, Philippians 2, 3. So, so, and this is um, this is something that I have problems with too. Actually, I have problems with all these. I use myself an ex- I, I I can use myself as a bad example more than a good example. So, uh, Philippians two three, it says, uh, "Let nothing be done through strife or vulgarity, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem." other better than themselves so you're supposed to uh, esteem the other person and this you have to keep in mind I'm not talking that other people are supposed to esteem you they're not other people aren't supposed to read this and then esteem you better it's you are supposed to read this and put others first that's how it's supposed to be so you have to keep in mind this this letter is being written to us that this Bible so it's literally saying, hey, you have this thing. You have this thing where you're supposed to esteem others better than yourself. Not necessarily to um, think that other people should read this and then esteem you better. It's a, it's a thing that I see all the time while the preacher's preaching. They'll say, hey, I know somebody who really needs to hear that. Well, the person that really needs to hear that is in this room right now or or online they need to put others first and this will put your flesh in the proper place it'll bring it down you'll be able to look at other people and you'll be able to say well man maybe that person needs uh maybe that person needs the seat on the train or or uh you know maybe that person needs uh the the last bit of morsel of food or the maybe the uh the you know what you see the person the uh the lady with the two mites well maybe the temple needs the money more or something like that. You know, maybe this other person needs this thing more, and uh, even if they don't, to you know, honestly, even if they don't, you should esteem them. I mean, there's a command in the Bible to do that, to esteem others more than yourself. It says, uh, "Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others." That's not saying you should look at that and then want it. That's not. That's not saying you should look at that and then you know want to buy it or whatever like that but it's it's supposed to say if you can help somebody help them you know look on their other things uh let this mind be in you which was also in christ who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god so jesus christ who is god but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant not the form of a master the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself so our example humbled himself Jesus is our example humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross and why did he die because he esteemed you more because he thought hey um, I'm going to uh, put you above me and uh, so our example is to put others first, to, uh, to humble ourselves and to, to humble our flesh. So Jesus actually literally put on flesh, and then he humbled that flesh, and he humbled it to the point where uh, he died. He died for us. He died to take away our sins. And so... Um, so you need to put others first to be able to put the, uh, the flesh nature, to put it down where it should be, and to bring the spiritual nature up. And these are seven things, so we'll go over them uh, just so you have a, a proper list. The first one is pray. The second one is give. The third one is uh, tell people about Jesus. The uh, fourth one is to read and study your Bible. Five is go to church. Seven is talk about the Bible with friends and fellowship and the seventh is put others first and if you do those things on a daily basis 
you'll put your flesh where it should be, and you'll you'll uh, put it in the garbage can where it should be, and then you'll bring the spirit out of the closet, dust it off, and you'll have your spiritual nature be stronger than your flesh nature. So, and don't forget to to facilitate all those things. Like I said before, I say this from experience, and John brought it up downstairs. Uh, you need you need to sleep. So <laughs> that's a uh, that's a big thing uh, when it comes to. Uh, uh, depression and such like that. Go to bed earlier. Don't, don't stay up too late. So, all right, uh, we'll go ahead and pray and get out of here. Father, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the good people today. Thank you for uh, having them be attentive. And uh, Lord, please help Greg to recover. Help him to recover quickly. Father, uh, bless the people as they go home. Help them to drive home safely. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen.
Oh, please. 